Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the first of my new art lessons for this year, 2021. I hope everyone's okay, I hope everyone's alright at home. Um, this week what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at making uh, a treasure map, an old fashioned treasure map, the sort that pirates would have, uh, and it should look something like this. So this is one I've made. Uh, it's got the compass rose at the top, very important to have a compass rose. It's got other details like a nice ship on it sea creatures, it's got details of the edges of the island, things like the cliffs, uh, and it's aged as well, so it needs to look old. Um, to do this, you will need the following. You will need a nice piece of paper. The paper you need is, is best if you can get cartridge paper, which is the paper you've got in your sketchbooks. Um, cartridge paper is a little bit thicker. If you use photocopying paper or just thin paper like this, it won't work in the same way um, because we need to age the paper first and to do that you're going to need some tea bags as well so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to fold this piece of paper up so it becomes more map like fold it in half that way fold it in half again so now i have that sort of a shape which is great uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to back fold it, which means go the opposite way to the folds I've done already. So whatever I've done already, I'm do it the other way. And that way, I weaken the paper. Every fold is a weakness in the paper, but it means that my paper it will help with my, the ageing of my paper, which comes next. I'm also going to fold it this way. So I'll put it in the middle that way too. Fingers are a bit dirty because I've been playing with old ink pens, but that's fine. It's probably a good thing actually. So there's my my uh, map ready. It's starting to look a bit older now already. If I get any wrinkles in and stuff like that, it's great. Um, so the next part is to make the edges look old. Now I could just leave them where they are, which is fine. It looks nice, but you know they want them to look handled. They want them to look like they've been out to sea and they've been. Um, you know, thoroughly dishevelled. So what I'm going to do, and this is really important that you do this sensibly, if you just take it and start ripping, and you rip, you know, half of one of these these uh, panels off, you're not going to have much space for doing your map and things. So what I'm going to do is literally take about a finger's width off, or about a centimetre off the edges, and I'm pulling it so that I get a nice varied edge because um, obviously it's been around for 300 years and it's done all sorts of been used by lots of grubby fingers and goodness knows what else um, yeah, that's one edge just be really careful when you're doing this because if you do this and you and you and you do it too quickly you'll end up with too much to see I'm already going too far out there I don't want to try and go that far again I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. Okay. And there we go. There we go, all finished. Looking good, looking old around the edges. If I fold it up, it still looks good. So the next thing I need to do will be to age it, because at the moment this paper looks too modern, it looks too 21st century to me. So I'm gonna need a tea bag, and I'm gonna move to a draining board so that I don't get really, really dirty and make a mess around the house, especially on my lovely white table, which would not be a good look. Right, so here I am at the sink. I'm going to do this on the draining board. So obviously any muck will all go in the sink and also you'll save the worktops and stuff like that. If you're not sure about doing this, ask a grown-up where you can do it. It's nice and simple. So I've got my tea bag. I've got a cup. That's my old water pot. I'm going to dip my tea bag in there for a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to start applying it. When I do, I'm just going to put it on and roll it round in circles. You see, it doesn't do very much to begin with, but pretty soon 
and you can see that there's some colour going on there. Now if you push too hard with this and you, you will split the tea bag and you'll get little bits that go all over it everywhere which is not ideal so try to do circular motions and just very gently get it on like so. The other thing about doing it on a draining board is that the water can sit on it which is quite good because it means that the tea will soak into your folds um, like this and it'll start to look more old in the folds and things like that. The other thing you have to make sure you're doing is you have to get the edges as well because obviously the edges if you've torn them where the, the, the in between the top and the bottom there um, you'll get a really nice old effect. So all the way around small circular motions and when that's done there we go that should do now that's only one layer uh, and that would work but you'll find that if you have already done one like i've done one here here's what i made earlier um, and then i put another layer on you'll see that it gets dark and it starts to look more old and more stained uh, you can also see how lovely it goes around the edges there. Um, this one here as well, I've ripped a little hole in it, but it makes it look even older and even better. So one layer is good, two layers is better. Um, I would do maybe two of these because if you make a mistake when you do your mat, you might need a new one. So if you do one or two of these at the same time, um, it will look better and you'll have more of a chance mistakes which do happen right so what I would do with these is either leave them on the, on the draining board if I can uh, if I couldn't I would make sure that they're not absolutely dripping wet and put them in an airing cupboard somewhere to dry for a few hours go and watch a film or go and, uh, practice your handwriting or something like that um, but once they're dry you're then ready for the next stage Okay, so the next part is uh, obviously to put your decorations on like I've done on this one. Um, so here is my dried um, map or base for a map. Um, it's looking nice and old. It's ready to be folded up and look great. The creases look fantastic. It's a nice, dark, rich colour. It looks old. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is, is um, a compass rose which is this part here. Um, compass roses obviously tell you which way to go, very important. Um, obviously you've got north, south, east and west, and then the uh, northeast, southeast, southwest and northwest. Obviously pirates need this to get around. Um, if you want to, you can have a go at practicing these before you start, but I'm gonna do that in the side. Now to do this, I could use a whole load of different things, but one thing I'm not gonna use is pencil. Pencil doesn't really work very well, um, and it doesn't. They wouldn't have really used pencils in uh, the olden days, so uh, I'm going to use. Uh, I could use a felted pen. Uh, fine liners are very good for this, um, in brown or black. Um, but I'm going to use one of these. This is a um, an OHP pen because it's a fine line pen. Um, the other thing as well that you could use, if you have it, is a proper ink pen. Um, but I might do that a little bit later on. Uh, the thing about these is you get a really nice line with them. So they sort of look like ink. And in the olden days, they would have used ink and a, a nib just like this. Um, the other thing you could use is something like a Sharpie, um, if you've got one. Because um, obviously the tips is quite good. You can get a very thin line, you can get thick lines, so you can vary it slightly. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my compass rose, and I'm going to put my compass rose up in this corner. So if I start with my triangle to go north, and for my writing, I'm going to try and do old fashioned writing. So very swirly, very decorative. North and south, uh, east and west. Um, just to make it a bit more interesting, I can add some other pieces to it as well. So I can do all sorts of little patterns on it if I wanted to make it look beautiful. Um, if you Google Compass Rose, you'll see lots of ideas. 
Obviously, between north and east, you've got north, east, and then southeast, southwest, and then northwest. Number one, done. The next thing I'm going to do is in this side, I'm going to put a little uh, piece of like a scroll, I suppose, so that I can tell people what my map is. So to do a scroll, I do my curly bits at the top, and I go down to the bottom. Start with that on one side. And then do the same on this side. So that's part of my scroll, so I can put my name of my map there and uh, the year it was created and all the rest of it. Then I'm going to fill my map up. Ideally, I'm going to have sort of a lump in the middle uh, and I'm going to start by just putting the background in. This one's going to be a mountainous hill. Um, another one I had here, I sort of went a bit more to town with it and did like a crag. Um, but yeah, this one I'm going to do a hill. So around the edges, this obviously is a hill sticking up out of the sea, but then around the edges around here, I'm going to just put a coastline in of some sort. Obviously, I need a bay somewhere, because obviously that's where the pirates are going to have to um, settle or have, a, have some sort of village or something. So here is my island. There we go. It goes around there like that. It disappears behind the mountain on that side. Um, that's well and good. Uh, I think I'm going to put a village here, so I'm going to have this harbour can be for the pirates to be in, uh, or for the for the people who live on the island. They might not necessarily have to be pirates. Um, and then I can start by making uh, cliffs and things like that. I'm copying this line here, basically, which means I get sort of a 3D effect. And I can start putting other lines in, things like that, to make it look more like a cliff. You can see it comes around here. Obviously, I wouldn't see this because it would sort of carry on underneath. So I would see there and there and there. And I'll just copy that line. That's how you do it. This bit here is going to be the bay. So I'm going to put some sticks and some jetties and things in there. And I could draw some ships in there if I wanted to as well. This bit here, have some more mountainous bits. This bit here, I'm going to make that into a beach. I think here, because I've got this bit sticking down here, I'll make a, like a little, another little rock that sort of sits on there as if it's falling into the sea a while ago. There we go. So it starts to look 3D. Um, when I've done that, I need to think about other things. So what's going on on my island? Where is the treasure? If you want to make a treasure map, is it going to be in a cave somewhere? Is it going to be something, you know, you need to put an X on there because X obviously marks the spot. This is where you can start adding your own details in. Now, in my other map here, I have obviously got Paradise Village there with my Fisherman's Bay with all the little ships in it. Um, I've labelled it because obviously if you were a sailor and you were looking around, you'd need to know what these things were so you could help identify things. Uh, so here I have uh, Simon's Jungle. And I put little warnings on beware of serpents. Sandy Cove. Sea beasties are quite good fun to do. You can really go to town that you can have uh, octopuses or um, like big sharks or things like that. Um, I've also got flying beasties at the top, a bit of a dragon going on there as well. Um, I've given some sort of ominous ones as well, like Dead Man's Leap and Serpent's Point. But there's lots and lots and lots of things you can do. If you are stuck for ideas, if you look for um, a, a, a pirate's name generator, it might. if you Google that and search for that on the internet, you will find... Um, some fantastic ideas for uh, for names if you're stuck. But there you go. Um, let me know how you do, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your efforts.